India and China are among the world's top five largest economies. They have GDPs of $3.2 trillion and $14.14 trillion, respectively. And both countries have witnessed rapid growth since China announced its 1978 open door policy by opening its doors to foreign businesses and India's liberalization of its economy in 1991, which made it more market and service oriented and also expanded the role of private and foreign investment. While the United States is currently the world's largest economy, China and India are both expected to overtake it by 2030 to become the world's two largest economies. Now, during these two countries' early post-reform years, their growth was largely defined by traditional businesses growing at a steady rate. However, the internet changed that when it was made available to the public in both countries in 1995. All of a sudden, the number of potential customers that businesses had access to exploded to include pretty much anybody who had an internet connection. Connection. And while everybody capitalized on this opportunity differently, there was a very specific type of business which was made possible by this internet explosion, the startup. These were companies that were typically started in people's bedrooms with whatever funds the company's founders could scrape together. They didn't have a lot of employees, they didn't have a lot of money, but what they did have was the internet. By the late 2000s, smartphones started to replace feature phones and cell phones in both India and China. And as the demand for mobile data increased because people were spending more time on these smartphones, the cost of that mobile data decreased, which resulted in an increase in internet penetration and also an increase in the opportunity for startups to access new customers. Let's take Infosys as an example here because they're one of India's earliest and most successful IT companies. It was founded in 1981, that's 10 years before liberalization and 14 years before the internet reached India. Now, after the internet reached India, it only took Infosys another four years to become a unicorn. And a unicorn, by the way, is a startup that's valued at $1 billion or more. So 18 years passed from the date that the the company was founded until it reached that $1 billion market cap in 1999, which is kind of insane. I mean, take a look at Udan. They started in June of 2016, and just 26 months later, they had achieved unicorn status. And the situation is actually pretty similar over in China. Back in 2005, China saw one startup become a unicorn, Alibaba. Five years later, in 2010, they saw another, Vanku, which is an e-commerce fashion retailer. But between 2010 and today, Today, the number of Chinese unicorns has exploded. Today, there are close to 500 unicorns around the world, and 206 of them are Chinese. India, on the other hand, is home to 31 unicorns, making it the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Now, it might not seem fair to compare India's startup ecosystem to China's. China, after all, has six times the number of unicorns. But I feel like India's startup ecosystem is currently in a similar position to that of China's startup ecosystem system in 2017. You had this startup explosion between 2015 and 2016 in China, which is what India saw in 2018, followed by a bit of a lull in 2017, which is what India is seeing right now. But then things picked right back up for China in 2018 when 58 Chinese startups became unicorns. And I have a feeling that India might see a similar resurgence in 2021 or 2022. Obviously, things have slowed down a bit thanks to you know what, but I still have faith that India will become the home of at least 50 new unicorns before 2025. And so with that in mind, let's take a look at these two countries to see what India's startup ecosystem can learn from China's startup ecosystem successes and mistakes. But before we jump in, if you're not already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Also, check us out on Instagram because we're gonna be hosting some live interviews with Indian entrepreneurs in the coming weeks. Okay, so back to startups. And specifically, let's talk about Chinese startups, because there's a bunch of reports floating around on the internet claiming that 10,000 new startups are created in China every single day. Other reports claim that China is home to more than 30 million startups. That's three crore startups, which is more than the entire population of Nepal. Imagine an entire country where every single person is an entrepreneur. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is China, those numbers are being stretched, and companies that shouldn't qualify as startups are being 
included in that 30 million number. But let's take a quick look at the United States, where out of a population of 331 million people, that's 33.1 crore people, 31 million are entrepreneurs. That means that one out of every 10 Americans is an entrepreneur. Now, China is home to 1.4 billion people. That's 140 crore people. So if we assume that one person is in charge of every single one of those 30 million startups, that means that one out of every 48 Chinese people is an entrepreneur, which isn't that hard to believe. And as we all know, startups are usually founded by two or three people. So that ratio of one in 48 could actually be closer to one in 16 or one in 24. Now, India, on the other hand, is home to around 80,000 startups. And like I mentioned earlier, 31 of those are unicorns. This is significant, and I'll tell you why. Like I mentioned earlier, China is home to 206 unicorns. That means that for every 145,000 startups, that's 1.45 lakh startups, China has one unicorn. India, on the other hand, has one unicorn for every 2,580 startups, meaning that Indian startups are more than 56 times more likely to become unicorns than Chinese startups. One of the reasons that China has so many more startups than India, 375 times as many in fact, is because of how many startup incubators there are in the country. Now, in case you haven't heard of startup incubators, the term is taken from the name of the device that's used to warm eggs until they hatch. Similarly, startup incubators foster the growth of early stage startups with things like mentoring, seed funding, office space, and training, so that these startups have a better chance of surviving and eventually thriving. Now, China has roughly 11,800 incubators, and in 2018 alone, these incubators helped more than 620,000 startups, that's 6.2 lakh startups. India, on the other hand, has just 520 incubators, and these incubators are capable of supporting 6,200 startups every single year. So going back to ratios here for a minute, in India, there's one incubator for every 154 startups, whereas in China, there's one incubator for every 2,542 startups. That being said though, China's incubator programs are roughly four and a half times larger than Indian incubator programs. If China's incubators were the same size as India's, there would be one incubator for every 577 startups, which is a little bit more reasonable. But I think the biggest takeaway here is that at this current rate of incubation, China is incubating 100 times more startups than India is. And incubated startups are more likely to succeed because they've received that mentorship and seed funding from the beginning. Now, traditionally, incubators have been physical places, but that big thing that's been happening for the last few months has changed things a little bit, and we've started to see a couple of incubators popping up online here and there. But generally speaking, a majority of a country's incubators are located in just a few key cities. In China, those cities are Shanghai, Hangzhou, Shenzhen, and Beijing. And that last one, Beijing, which of course is the capital of China, is also the unicorn capital of the world. 82 of the world's 481 odd unicorns are from Beijing. That's nearly 17% of the world's unicorns and 40% of China's. In India, the startup hubs are Delhi NCR, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and of course the Silicon Valley of India, Bangalore. Of the 31 unicorns in India, 14 of them, or 45% of them, are from Bangalore. But what about value? Like I said earlier, Indian startups are 56 times more likely to become unicorns than Chinese startups. But what if we just focus on the top three unicorns in both of these countries? That should give us a rough idea of just how much potential both of these ecosystems have. So on China's side, we have ByteDance, Didi Chaojing, and Kuaizhou. ByteDance, which is currently the world's most valuable startup, is valued at $75 billion, or 5.6 lakh crore rupees. And you've probably indirectly heard of these these guys because of their extremely popular video sharing platform, TikTok. After ByteDance, we have Didi Chaojing, which is essentially China's Uber. In fact, they acquired Uber China back in 2016. Didi Chaojing is valued at $56 billion or 4.19 lakh crore rupees. And then finally, we have Beijing Kuaizhou Technology, which is valued at $18 billion or 1.34 lakh crore rupees. Like ByteDance, their flagship product is a video sharing platform called Kuaizhou. 
Guizhou, or Kui for short, and it's a direct competitor to TikTok. These three startups have a combined value of $149 billion, or 11.15 lakh crore rupees. Now, moving over to India, the three most valuable startups are Paytm, Baiju's, and Oil. Paytm, which is valued at $16 billion, or 1.2 lakh crore rupees, is an Alibaba-backed fintech and mobile payment startup that is currently competing with companies like Walmart-backed PhonePay, Google Pay, and to a lesser extent, WhatsApp Pay, Amazon Pay, and GeoPay. Then we've got the leader in India's edtech space, Baiju's, which is backed by Chinese multinational conglomerate Tencent. Baiju's is valued at $10.5 billion, or 78,000 crore rupees. And then lastly, we have Indian hotel aggregator startup, Oyo, which was last valued at $10 billion, or 75,000 crore rupees. Although that might change because Oyo has seen some pretty heavy losses, thanks to you know what. So the combined value of India's top three startups is 36.5 billion dollars or 2.7 lakh crore rupees which is a pretty substantial chunk of change but it doesn't really stand up next to the value of china's top three startups but of course valuations aren't everything in the world of startups things can change in a matter of weeks or even days sometimes how much you're worth matters less than who's backing you so with that in mind let's talk about investments between january and mid-november of 2019 chinese startups raised a total of 35.6 billion dollars. That's 2.6 lakh crore rupees. Indian startups, on the other hand, raised 14.5 billion dollars. That's 1 lakh crore rupees in the entire year of 2019. In other words, in 2019, China's startup ecosystem raised 2.5 times what India's startup ecosystem raised in the same year. Now, if these funds were evenly distributed amongst all of China's startups, each startup would get 1,186 dollars or 87,706 rupees. Whereas in India, each startup would get $181,250 or 1.35 lakh rupees each. And I also think that it's worth mentioning that 2019 was a record-breaking year for India's startup ecosystem. The ecosystem had never raised that much money before. The previous record-breaking year was 2018, when India's startup ecosystem raised $10.5 billion or 78,000 crore rupees. So there was a 40% increase from 2018 to 2019. China's startup ecosystem, on the other hand, saw a 60% decrease in the amount of funds that it raised from 2018 to 2019. So it seems like investors might be starting to lose interest in China's startup ecosystem as it grows older. The potential for massive returns for these investors is starting to diminish as markets mature and stabilize. India's startup ecosystem, on the other hand, is still very chaotic. There's still tons of room for growth and plenty of nascent markets for investors to dump their money into. And you might have noticed earlier how I highlighted the fact that India's top startups are backed by Chinese firms. And that's purely because India has so much potential. In fact, out of that $14.5 billion or 1 lakh crore rupees that Indian startups raised in 2019, 4 billion or 30,000 crores came from Chinese investors like Tencent, Alibaba, and Shunwei Capital. But what about the actual startup ecosystem? What is it like on the ground if you're a startup entrepreneur in China versus India? Well, the world World Bank has a list of 190 countries ranked by how easy it is to do business in them. And back in 2015, China was in the middle of that list at number 90. Its neighbors on that list were countries like Serbia, Antigua and Barbuda, Namibia, and Paraguay. India, on the other hand, was ranked much, much lower at 142, sharing their section on the list with countries like Uzbekistan, West Bank and Gaza, Sierra Leone, and Gabon. But fortunately for both countries, they've left these positions behind. China has moved up 59 places to 31st, and India has moved up 79 places to 63rd. But of course, this is all just data. What are things actually like on the ground? Well, in 2015, on average, it took 31 days to start a business in China and 29 days to start a business in India. Today, though, it only takes nine days to start a business in China and 18 days in India. So that might explain why there are so many more startups in China than in India. Simply put, the Chinese government has reduced barriers and cut down the number of steps required to start up. While the Indian government 
government has been slower to reduce these barriers, at least so far. In the past though, the Indian government has said that they're committed to reducing the number of days that it takes to start a business to just five days. Then in terms of raising funds, which is a pretty big part of a lot of startups journeys, India, like I said earlier, has been attracting more and more investments over the years. And this was reflected in their rising position on the World Bank's list. Now, you would think that whether or not a country startup ecosystem attracts investors or not would be largely dependent upon how much potential the startups in that ecosystem have. If the startups in that ecosystem are doing well, then the investors come knocking, right? Well, actually, that's just one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is protection. Investors need to feel secure in their investments. They need to feel that there are rules and regulations governing the startups that they're going to be investing in. Otherwise, they won't want to invest. For example, if a startup ecosystem is known for its lack of transparency and disclosure with minority shareholders, or for the misuse of funds raised from those shareholders, or even for a lack of legally protected rights for shareholders, then there's not going to be any shareholders. Investors just won't feel comfortable investing in an ecosystem like that, no matter what kinds of opportunities the market offers. And of course, without investors, a startup ecosystem's growth will be stunted, and as a result, the country's economic growth will be stunted as well. So long story short, minority investor protection is a very important metric in a country's overall ease of doing business score. Back in 2015, China was ranked 132nd for its minority shareholder protection, and India was ranked 7th. By 2019 though, India's score had decreased slightly to 14th, while China's score had increased significantly to 28th. So India has been slipping a little bit in this category, but they're still doing a better job than China at making their country safe for investors. And that's all thanks to the government's shareholder protection policies. But I also think that it's worth taking a look at what both of these countries' governments are doing to directly promote entrepreneurship. So the Chinese government launched its Mass Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program in 2015. And so China witnessed what is known in China as its fourth wave of entrepreneurship. In order to accomplish this, the Chinese government did things like providing startups with financial support, creating technology technology infrastructure, revising outdated laws and regulations, tax reductions and exemptions, and just generally trying to make entrepreneurship more accessible to everyday people. India has taken a similar approach with its Startup India campaign, which was launched in 2016 with the goal of increasing entrepreneurship and innovation in the country. Prior to Startup India, just four Indian states had implemented startup-related policies. Today though, 26 out of India's 36 states and union territories have an enacted startup policies to promote entrepreneurship. The Indian government has also created a 10,000 crore rupee fund that's a $1.3 billion fund, which they're calling the Fund of Funds, and they're using it to invest in emerging startups. Out of this 10,000 crore rupees, 3,582 crore rupees, that's $480 million, has been invested into 338 Indian startups. Now, while 10,000 crore rupees might seem like a pretty big number, it's actually less than one-tenth of what India's entire startup ecosystem raised in 2019. China's government, on the other hand, has set aside 24 lakh crore rupees for promoting Chinese startups. That's $320 billion, or nine times what China's startup ecosystem raised in 2019. So China's government is definitely giving its startup ecosystem more financial support than India's government is giving to its startup ecosystem. And that's one of the reasons why Indian startups tend to end up raising funds from outside investors. And specifically, they raise a lot of funds from Chinese investors. Now, in response to this, and also in response to the potential for Chinese VC firms to capitalize on the need for funds that a lot of Indian startups are facing right now because of you know what, which would result in even more Chinese ownership of Indian startups than there already is, the Indian government introduced policy reforms in 2020, which make it more difficult for Chinese investors to invest in India. But some people have criticized this move, saying that if the Indian government wants to start walling off Chinese investors, then they need to make sure that those funds are coming from somewhere else. Because it doesn't look like those funds are going to be coming from the Indian government. And so far, India just doesn't have homegrown tech giants that are willing or capable of investing as much as Chinese investments like Tencent, Alibaba, and Xiaomi. Indian startups rely on foreign direct investment because they don't have any other choice. Those funds just aren't available 
available to them within India. In 2019, 10% or less of the funds raised by India's startup ecosystem came from within India, compared to 27% from China and 62% from the United States. So, will India's startup ecosystem overtake China someday? Only time will tell. We know that probably by 2027, India's population will overtake that of China's. But whether or not India's startup ecosystem does or not will largely depend on the performance of India's economy as a whole. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, India has a $3.2 trillion economy, whereas China has a $14.14 trillion economy. So India definitely has a long way to go before it can take its place as an equal next to China. But I don't think that that's impossible, especially with China's reputation right now. I just think that it's gonna take a while. However, in the meantime, I think that India should definitely be proud of its startup ecosystem and the fact that it's the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. To me, that's something worth celebrating. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.